Waffenträger E100. What oh, a glorious machine that has been invented here. A machine of death and destruction. It is very dangerous. It has, at present, I've got the small gun, so six shells in the magazine. And each shell will do an average of 560 damage. Now, the attentive reader will notice that that is around 3,300 damage in the barrel, just waiting to be unleashed on some poor hapless creature. And here we go. God oh, ding. Penetration is pretty good on this smaller gun. The bigger gun has lower penetration, only four shells in the magazine, but an average damage of 750, which of course is quite nice. And of course, the bigger gun has a shorter loading time, whereas the small gun is around 57 seconds, the big gun is uh, less than 50, and that is quite a difference, 10-15% reload speed. So the DPM on the two guns is not that different, but the effective damage, I'm sure, is uh, quite different. As I found with the uh, Waffenträger Rheinmetall Borsig, tier 8 German uh, new tank destroyer the bigger gun even though it has lower DPM in actual fact does more damage per battle on average because whenever people get hit they have this annoying habit of pulling back out of harm's way how dare they how dare they unheard of anyway the accuracy on this smaller gun is quite good don't get in the open you fool as you can see, I was able to take the tracks off a guy at what, three, four hundred meters. It's quite nice. But anyway, let's talk about the tank. It has the E100s undercarriage, so good armor on the undercarriage. No armor, i.e. 20 millimeters on the upper structure, so yeah, no real armor there. It, it doesn't seem to have the E100s spaced armor on the undercarriage, but still I've dinged a few shots here and there. That's the armor. The gun I've talked about at length because it is a Gatling laser. It is a world eater. It is just a magnificent gun. Movement, it is quick. I think there's up to 30 or 40. It has good acceleration. You know, for a tank destroyer of this size, you think it's really slow. It's actually, I was out running in the IS-7 the other day, not on top speed, but on acceleration in water. It's got good broad tracks, so I, uh, what I find is cross-country mobility in general just is a very good. Camouflage, none. You know, <laughs> some guy was talking about putting a camouflage net on it, and I'm thinking, well, you know, if you put the Empire State Building in the middle of an open field, everyone will see it. If you put a camouflage net on the Empire State Building in the middle of an open field, everyone will still see it. Don't bother. I've got binoculars on here. Um, still debating that. I've got the gun lane drive. And I can't remember what I've got. This. Yes, the third one. I've got super heavy small liner because, of course, as you have no camo, you will always get spotted, and you are artillery's favorite target. So, uh, Super Heavy Small Liner has saved my life quite a few times. So, anyway, as you can see from this round, more than 5,000 damage. Uh, we're going to lose the round because our heavies just went in the middle of the open and got exploded. And now I got exploded. So, let's talk a little bit about the gameplay. How do you play this thing? Well, as you have no real armor on the upper structure, everyone will be shooting the upper, st upper structure, obviously. So how do you play it? Because you are huge. As soon as you stick your nose out, you will be spotted and everyone will be shooting at you because they're thinking, easy kill, easy kill. It's not, it's got 2,200 hit points, but uh, whatever. How do you play it? 
you are a support tank, obviously. You can go for the long range sniping. I find that on average when I do that I only get 1500 to 3500 damage output which is not enough for a tank of this size. Well, 3500 is kind of decent, but uh, 1500 certainly is not. So, having played now about 50 games I've come to, to the conclusion that it is a uh, medium range support tank or a close range support tank. Here we're going in close range and I can tell you when people see this thing coming I mean one thing is they're thinking easy target but the other thing they're thinking is oh fuck I'm gonna die because you are. I have got 3300 damage in my gun that is enough to kill any tank in the game insofar that you can penetrate it. Penetration is pretty good so not much of a problem really and here we go let's see who the first guy is to die this is normally a heavy tank job, right? But not for me. Boom! Boom! And you're dead. Alright, we've still got three shells left. Oh, come on! Get out of my way! I'm the big kahuna around here. Okay, what have we got? We've got someone in the open. Let's... Boom! And next! Didn't scratch them, bad shot on my part. And we're back and reloading. So as you notice there, this is a very hard spot on Sacred Ground Valley, whatever this map is. They need to change it. This is a very hard spot to penetrate. You know, you get stuck and bottled up and it's a killing zone and it's not good. But basically, by leading with the big gun. That's the guy that ought to have been leading that just ran past me. Bloody hell. Anyway, by leading with the big gun, you break straight through it, you get them in disarray, and you do the one thing that is always effective. Rather than doing a standoff, sniping, shooting, uh, peekaboo, all of that, you just run in there with everything you've got, and you spank them. So that's what we did. We've broken through. They are in our cap. I will go back and defend the cap. And we'll see what happens from there. Now I'm still getting used to this map with its many layers and levels. It's like an onion. Peel one layer off and there's another layer. It's kinda weird. At this point I don't actually have a plan. You know. Go ahead by one tank. We were ahead by three tanks at one point, but I don't know if some people died or whatever. Um, so I don't have a plan. I figure I will just advance. They're spread out. They are not grouped up in any way, so that means they're coming in groups of one. And any tank I meet one on one, I can destroy with very limited effort. One, two. Isn't that beautiful? See, the Fock is one of the tanks I really don't like running into because that frontal armor it's 180 millimeters and it's perfectly sloped it's perfectly sloped and then some it's probably effectively what 350 350 millimeters or something it's crazy now there is this weak spot you can shoot uh, on top of it which isn't as weak as well, in my experience is not as weak as I would like it to be but, uh, you know, I'll try and shoot it anyway. So there's an nice 7 around this corner here. He's at 50% health. I've got 3 shells left. That's 1500. So unless I do something stupid, you're dead. 1, 2, I've got a third shell left. Kill Stealer! Means now is kill a couple of additional people. So I'll save you the driving and skip to the action. You notice this shot that's coming up. I see him, he's trying to pull out. First shot fires quite weird. Track him. Shoot him just to the left of, of where the whatever is that runs the belt is. 
he chooses to suicide. He's that scared of me. Can't blame him. Muravanka. Of course, the enemy will be camping his ass off in the forest of magic fairies and mushrooms. So how about we make some distance and just shoot at whatever comes our way. Yeah, brilliant plan mate, brilliant plan. That always works. Oh! One of our boys just got vaporized. Got spotted and vaporized. It's unpleasant having E100 shoot at you. you know, people tend to die from that. And here we see the one minute reload time. Now I see scouts very often just running in, spotting everything in the first 30 seconds, not realizing that the artillery is not reloaded. Nor is now the Waffentrager E100. Look at that shot. Look at that shot. That's beautiful. Covering ahead. Unfortunately, see, when this scout is going in too deep, he doesn't realize that the big kahunas down here can't actually support him up there. So I've still got four shells left, no need to reload. See, there's the E100 spotted, but he's just outside of my range. And now he's pulling back up on him. Won't be able to catch up to him. Now, I could have sat further to the right, but that would be what they'd expect me to do. And I don't like doing what people expect me to do. Need to keep them on their toes! Basic Sun Tzu for you. You can hear the. I, I forgot to mention this. You can hear the sounds of the shooting. Doesn't that just sound absolutely astoundingly good? That is Gnome Father's sound mod. I've put on the one for the guns and the one for the engines. Now, the engines sound, well, actually different. <laughs> for example, the KV 4 sounds like a fishing trawler, uh, the British sound more like a modern. Uh, tank with a sort of high-pitched, not whine, but engine sound, if that makes sense. This sounds like a 12-cylinder something rather. Kind of nice. Sounds like the 1200 horsepower it has. Very nice. Very nice indeed. That was my best attempt at a French accent. And we're reloaded. That means someone is going to get a whirl of hurt. The rain, miss, he swings round, boom, hit. No one, aiming ahead, hit. Ah, he disappeared. I haven't got the uh, perk where you get the extra two seconds. I get that on most of my guns. I can't remember what it's called. Eagle Eye? Whatever. The one where they stay lit two more seconds than they would have. I love that. Wait, it's three on three. Kill wise. Not bad. Our right flank, however, is kind of weak. Our left flank is doing subtle. So I figure, why not? Of course, there's a house in my way. Just because I moved, they started moving forward. Bastards. Or tactical geniuses. Whichever works. Okay, pulling in the flank. Folding in the flank, I should say. And I haven't really done a lot of damage yet. I've killed two, but it was mostly small stuff. But now, oh, oh, there we go, tracked. Oh, I've got 
one shot left in the barrel. That was pathetic. I barely damaged him at all. Yeah, come on the other side. There we go. Boom. Nice shot. The frontal plate of the IS-7 is very good. And you have to be, I don't know, using your brain to actually penetrate it. Which obviously I failed to do. So I guess this is about what you can do to get 5,000 damage in this battle, which is nice given that it was kind of hard. How did I miss that first shot? So that's it. Lovely tank to play. Some say wildly overpowered and they might be right and you probably get nerfed. But it is difficult to play well. It is very difficult to play well because of the extreme inability to hide anywhere you need to be very cautious of your surroundings and you need to be very cautious of the fact that as soon as you are spotted all of the artillery and all of the guns on the entire map will be pointing your way so with that I bid you a good day and until next time stay frosty